Hi, I'm Jason Alster, and this is another episode of Meet the Author. Today, I'll be talking about my book, Creative Painting for the Young Artist. In the book, it deals with painter's block, distill the fear of painting, artist statements, the creative process, thinking positively about paintings, brainstorming for ideas, how to choose a subject, knowing your subject and be selective, define the essence of a scene, artist mode of seeing gazing, composition, creating interest, focal point, linear perspective, painting techniques, color personality, relaxation exercises, imagination exercises, ideas for creativity, a critique checklist, and my own artist statement. Now, I wrote this book because as a youngster, I could not paint, and I also had a problem with handwriting. And for that, um, over the years, I developed ways to, and I also learned how to improve my painting. And also, now I teach art, and then I wrote this book. And I also improved my handwriting, and the two go together, and I wrote a, and I made a video anyone can improve their own handwriting. Now, the story behind this book, Create a Painting for the Young Artist, I'm going to mention in a moment, but there's a little bit of an art mystery that I solved to get to the point of writing this book. Now, let me just show some pictures to get an idea. And I did this for youngsters because I really didn't have a book that could show me as a youngster how to paint and how to develop the creative process. just to get an idea of some of the things that are in the book. Now, before I started this book, when I was a child, my, I knew that my grandfather, Joseph Alster, was an artist. And he lived in Poland and in Germany at the time of the Second World War. And he actually went through the Holocaust. But he did not survive. However, he left a painting that my family had. And this painting was over my father's bed post in the house that I grew up. And he painted a painting of a castle, and I didn't know exactly where this castle was because Joseph Oster lived in Poland. He was born in Poland, but he also lived in Germany. So I wasn't sure was this a real castle, was this a figment of the imagination, where exactly this was. And the other question I didn't know was Joseph Foster a professional artist, a good artist? At the time, I didn't know enough about art to determine that. When I found out, after I became an artist, I found out that he actually was a good artist. I incorporated his techniques into a page of the book. And this way, I brought him back to life. And some of the techniques we'll see in the painting, for instance, is that he did show, like a professional artist, an area of interest in the painting. He did highlight that. He did uh, have a proper horizon line, a vanishing point in the uh, painting. He had lines of perspective, and he also had cre he created visual movement. So yes, he was, uh, in a way, a professional artist. And um, I was able to bring him and his influence on myself as an artist through putting his painting in the book and using that to sort of like bring his painting style back to life. And because I wanted to find out more about him, I made trips all around Europe, in Germany especially, to try to track down where this painting might have come from. Before I go on, um, only recently it has been available from the Holocaust Museum in America. Uh, transcripts of people who perished in the Holocaust, and we actually got a transcript of my grandfather, who was in the Buchenwald concentration camp. 
Now, Alster is a name I knew of a river in Hamburg, Germany. It's the Alster, I'm sorry, a lake. It's the Alster Lake. <clears throat> and I didn't know, uh, that was the place I wanted to start. And, uh, maybe um, in this area he, he lived and maybe he painted the painting in this area. So this is a picture of the Alster Lake in Hamburg where I started to try to find out what's going on. And what I found out is that there actually is a Castle Alster, an Alster Tower in that area. And we see here in this photo, that's a Bolt Castle with the Alster Tower. But that doesn't look like the castle in the painting. So that wasn't it. And on different trips that I stopped over in Germany, because I lived in Israel, and I would uh, go back and forth between American Israel, and I would stop over in Europe on different trips, and also made some trips to Europe. Um, one of the places I stopped in, tra uh, traveled around in Germany, was near the Nuchschwanstein Castle. And here's a picture of myself in the mountains on, near the, in Bavaria, near the Nuchschwanstein Castle, which we'll see is the Cinderella Castle, more or less. That's what it's known for. Looks like the Cinderella Castle. A beautiful, beautiful castle, but that is not the one in the painting. So I had to keep looking. Coincidentally, in that castle during the Second World War, a lot of the paintings that were uh, stolen during the Second World War were hidden in that castle and freed by the Allies, of course. And there was another type of style of German castle in that area. And again, that doesn't look like the painting. So I had no idea what was going on. And I kept searching, and the years passed by, and I still couldn't find the castle. Then one day, my daughter, I was talking to her about our roots uh, in a book that I was writing, Leaving Home, Going Home, Returning Home, A Hebrew-American Soldier in the Land of Israel. And in this book, I actually talk about my travels. Uh, when I went to Germany, I had to make a decision if I wanted to go back because of the Holocaust. In the end, I did, and uh, meeting different peoples that lived there and my experiences. Um, very interesting, and I talk about that in the book, Leaving Home, Going Home, Returning Home. So in the end, when I was talking to my daughter, um, 